Hello my K-Bays, how are you guys doing today? I hope you're doing great. Today, we're going to be talking about a case that is based out of the UK. Suzanne Capper was born in 1976 to her mother Elizabeth. She had an older sister named Michelle, and they were born around the Manchester, England area. Now, Suzanne would have a tough life, you guys. Her dad just completely bailed on all of them, just left them to fend for themselves. So her dad was not in her life, completely out of the picture. So she already felt like, you know, why did my dad leave me? You know, why, do, why doesn't he love me? Stuff like that, you know? She was already dealing with a lot. Like her mom had decided to get with a new man. And this new man, which is okay, you guys can get with new men after the last one leaves or you break up, whatever happens. Anyways, her mom gets with this new man, but this new man and her mom literally fight 24-7. So Suzanne and her sister are living in this house of ruckus, fighting all the time, stressful all the time, on edge and on thin ice all the time. It was miserable. They just totally did not enjoy that crap. Who would? When Suzanne was around 14, her mom would also just bounce on the two girls and just leave them. She left them with the stepdad, who luckily, thank God, took care of them for the most part. But they still had to bounce from couch to couch, but like between friends and other family members and stuff like that, you know? And they even were taken in by the authorities for a while. I don't know why they didn't keep them or do more about the situation that was going on. I don't, you know, I just don't really understand, like, why these poor little girls was having to just bounce from couch to couch and the police knew about it but didn't do anything about it. Knew that their biological mom and biological dad were just out of the picture and just, you know, nothing. Like these poor girls just really had it tough. Because of all this couch hopping and all the bull crap that life is throwing at Suzanne, her school attendance was just horrible. It was um, what they would call erratic. But I mean, when you are bouncing from couch to couch, trying to figure out where you're gonna lay your head, when you're gonna eat, how you're gonna eat, what you're gonna do, school is kind of the last thing from your mind, I think. Sorry, I've got something in my eyeball. Around 1992, Suzanne would start hanging around Jean Powell a lot. She babysat her three kids for her, but since all this crap had been going on in her life, it was kind of her most um, stable place, I guess you could say. Jean, however, was involved in a lot of criminal activity. Um, she sold drugs, did drugs, there was just constant traffic coming in and out of her house with like stolen goods, trading stolen goods for drugs, like this, that, and the other. She started looking towards Jean as kind of a mother figure. Jean was 25 though, and Susan was 16, so it wasn't like a super far apart age gap, but it was, Jean was old enough that Suzanne I keep saying Susan. If I say Susan or Suzanne, I'm sorry. Like, I mess up a lot. But I am i don't mean any disrespect to her. But I mess up on names a lot. But Suzanne, she looked towards Jean as like a mother figure. She looked up to her. She loved her so much. She was like the most stable person in her life. She babysat for her and cleaned for her. And really just cared for her a whole lot. She would even call her mom sometimes, but you know, you're about to know. So sadly, even though that Suzanne looked up to Jean so freaking much and even called her mom, she was the only stable, good person in her life to Suzanne. Um, Jean took advantage of Suzanne like crazy. Suzanne would babysit her three kids all the time. She would clean the house constantly. She would just do everything around there. Suzanne was busting her arse for Jean. Jean never paid her. I don't even know if she thanked her. She kind of, I guess, just expected her to do it and 
you know, Suzanne was happy to do it because that was her, like, mother figure. She wanted to help her and give back to her because she felt like Jean was giving something to her by just being in her life, which is really sad because all she wanted to be was just really, really loved. And so, like, she did not realize she was being used. She just didn't want to be forgotten or left again you know what i mean at one point jean would even ask suzanne to drop out of school for her in order to babysit more and clean like come on jean really like you're really gonna ask some oh but you know i'm just this lady is evil and there's so many more evil people to come so it's just like i can't even really sit here and pretend i'm shocked at the shit they are doing now when you were getting ready to hear what they do in the future in this story so I'm going to bring in the next character, Bernadette McNeely, who was 23 years old and also had three kids. I'm just going to talk about her a brief second. This biatch from Satan's butthole in hell is evil as frick. She literally, like the house that um, Jean lived in, where Suzanne's like cleaning and babysitting that like for that person um was like a kind of like a townhouse type type thing but also kind of like a duplex well Bernadette bitch ass Bernadette lived two doors down so they were literally their houses were connected but yet for some reason unknown to anybody probably like drugs and sex Bernadette decided to take her three kids and move on in with Jean so now it's Bernadette Jean Suzanne and six freaking kids man and it's just like I don't know what was wrong with Burn's house I'm gonna call her Burn because I like to shorten shit and make it easier so Burn's house was just freaking fine she could have lived there and apparently she kept paying rent because I guess like this whole time she's living with Jean, it's still her house. She still goes in and out of it and you'll hear more later on in the story that they use it for some other things too. So I'm just like, why didn't she just live there? Why didn't she just freak off? Because I'm pretty sure she made things a lot worse. On top of Jean, Suzanne, Bernadette and the six kids living in the house, Four more people are about to move up in there, too. So, the first person we're going to talk about out of these four pieces of shizats is Glenn Powell, who is Jean Powell's, Jean's, ex-husband. Apparently, he's, like, in and out of the house. Like, I don't know if he, like, lived there permanently, but I'm pretty sure he did. And he, they were all criminal type people, all on methamphetamine. I'm not judging because I've came from a place of, you know, shit. But I'm just saying, you can kind of, you know, you can be a good drug addict. You can. I'm not saying that it's good to do drugs. I'm just saying that you can do drugs and still be a good person. But then you can also do drugs and be the worst piece of shit in the world. And if you picture that kind of drug addict, this was that whole entire household besides the six kids and Suzanne, obviously. So just, just have that mentality for a moment. We don't like to judge, but we're going to judge these pieces of shizits because frick them, that's why. All the hardships that Suzanne would go through, she still was one of the most polite, most sweet, caring, loving girls in the whole wide world. Despite all the crap that she's been through, she was just amazing, had the greatest heart, was so caring and loving. I wish I could have known her and been her friend. Oh, I really do, because this poor girl just has already been going through it and so much more hell is on its way. Oh, and just a side note, Miss Bernadette, um, she, her and Jean were both known to be like the neighborhood itch bays. Like, the neighbors didn't like them and when they seen them outside and shit, they tried to avoid them. 
At one point, Bernadette even threatened to burn one of the neighbor's houses down for I don't know what reason. Luckily, she didn't do that, but she did, however, go set their damn clothes on fire that was like hanging out to dry. Like, this lady was off her freaking rocker, man. Clifford Pook was the next person to be living up in there. And he is 17 years old and Jean's like younger brother. So yeah, he's up in there too. Just young as hell, getting his feet all dirty up into their bullshit. So here comes the next contestant, Anthony Dudson, who is 16 years old. But guess who he is? Guess who he is? Yeah. 23 year old Bernadette's mother frickin' boyfriend, dude. Yeah, he he's tapping this bitch. He's tapping Chucky wannabe. Like he's a minor, like, whew. it's like once you, I just hate all the this whole household besides the six kids and Suzanne. I hate them all. I hate them with a passion, fiery passion in my heart. Um, but yeah, Bernadette and her sixteen-year-old boyfriend Anthony. Last to enter the scene is Jeffrey Lee, who was not really permanently living there. He was probably the one to least be there, but he was still in and out of the house a lot, doing drugs and selling and doing the do's. He was thrown in jail or something for stealing money from his 86-year-old aunt or grandma or something like that. All I knew was it was a family member who was 86 years old and he stole money from them. That, he goes right in the POS book too, bitch. So, on top of all this drama and bullshit, they're all boinking each other too. So, 16-year-old Anthony is boinking freaking 23-year-old Bernadette and 25-year-old Jean. 25-year-old Jean's also boinking Jeff and then... Uh, Jean's ex, Gwen, who lives there, I wouldn't doubt that they weren't still boinking even though they were divorced. Like, it was just a boink fest over there. It was just boinking drugs and abuse, I swear. It was just... Ugh. But just, just on another note, I'm not judging anybody who wants to boink everybody in the house. That's fine. That's your choice. You can do whatever you want. I'm just saying... When you hear more about this story and get an idea of who these people are and like kind of what they're like, it's just gross. Everything about them is gross. So you can point whoever you want, how many ever people you want. You go for it, baby. It is hot hole summer, whatever you want to call it. But these people are nasty. They, they, they're just not cute when they do it. So Jean and Bernadette, Miss Jean and Bern, became like BFFs and... They, like, started taking out all their anger and frustrations on poor sweet Suzanne, dude. And I'm sorry I've gotten so caught up in talking about these piece of shit people living in this house that I haven't been talking about Suzanne as much. But this sweet baby girl, like, she is just working her ass off, taking care of the kids, cleaning the house. I'm sure she's cooking and doing everything else and running errands for them, too. And, I mean... They're just like, she's Cinderella. She is literally Cinderella in their house. Man, anything that went wrong over there, they would blame her, no matter if it was her fault or not. Like, oh, they, I don't think they had pets, but man, if the dog, if a dog came in from outside and shit on the floor, Suzanne, why'd you shit on the floor? You know what I mean? And then, but then the thing is, they would abuse her over everything. Physically, mentally, verbally, all of it. And poor Suzanne's sweet little precious heart, she took this shit because in her head, she just, for one, wanted to be loved and looked at Jean as her mother figure. So she was just like, you know, obviously if Jean's like treating me like this and letting other people treat me like this, I must deserve it. You know what I mean? Like, and that fucking breaks my heart, dude. This story fucking breaks my heart. So get this though. Suzanne you know, put up with a lot of the abuse because she just wanted to be loved. She wanted to be around Jean and, you know, she also really didn't have anywhere to go. But she did try to leave once. And when Suzanne left the house, she was covered in bruises, guys. Like, you could tell she had been being beat on. 
She showed up at her mom's house and her mom turned her away. Even seeing all the bruises on her body turned her away, you guys. And told her that she couldn't stay there. Why? Because her new boyfriend didn't want her there. Like, are you freaking serious? But Suzanne was apparently, allegedly, not knowing if this is true, told by her mother that in a few weeks she should come back, that she would have a room ready for her. Which I really believe this was a lie because um, if your boyfriend don't want her there, then why would he let you make a room for her? You know, whatever. So Suzanne ended up going to her stepdad's house and her stepdad, sweet old stepdad, let her in there. Like, I don't know much about the stepdad. I don't know if he was bad or not, but he seems like the only good person besides her sister, Michelle, in this whole story. So her stepdad let her stay there, luckily, and she got away from Jean and that shit household as of right now. So this is where shit starts getting crazy, and I mean crazy. The whole household, you know, the household of shitheads, the, um, like what, six adults and six kids, and what, whatever, the big old household, I like 12 people in it, not including Suzanne at this time. Um, the whole household that was boinking each other contracted genital crabs, you know, the little vagina and penis crabs. So, um, you know, which that happens, okay? Like, Oh, nobody's judging people who get crabs you know shit happens it really sucks for whoever has gotten it or has it but shit happens but these motherfuckers were judging them so they all have crabs and <laughs> i'm laughing at the fact that they're just so freaking stupid and so heartless and just so stupid like i'm laughing at that like just their dumbness their crab outbreak was also blamed on poor Suzanne. Suzanne, who for one, didn't even live there anymore when the outbreak happened. And for two, I don't think she was sleeping with any of them mother truckers. So it's just like, what the truck? So Jean and Bernadette's already just pissed off that Suzanne ain't there to clean and cook and watch the kids anymore. And now that this crab outbreak happened between the sex tuplets or whatever you want to call them um they're just like mm -mm. no this is her fault she's done pissed us off now giving us crabs while she's over at her dad's house like she had to have um she had to have told them to come over here or something they claimed that suzanne gave them the crabs because she had slept on their bed a couple of times like, y'all are all boinking each other, all going all over the universe and coming back to the same house and boinking each other in this filthy, nasty house y'all probably never bathe. Suzanne sleeps on your bed twice and you think the crabs are from her. Okay, honey. Okay. But no, I don't think that's how it works, boy. I don't think that is how it works. But this is where things get freaking horrific. So Bernadette and Jean decide that Suzanne, since she's at fault for this the, the crab situation, you know, has to pay for this, you know? We gotta make her pay for giving us these damn freaking vagina bugs. So they go over to where Suzanne's staying at her stepdad's house knocks on the door no 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 dad opens like yo what's up actually i don't know how he says it but you know he, he's the coolest person in this video so far so yo what's up and they're just like uh is suzanne here we need to talk to her so he has suzanne come to the door and bernadette and jean are like there is this boy and he showed up at our door and he is just swooning over you. We don't know who he is, but he is wanting to see you and can't stop talking about you. And I think you need to come over and meet up with this guy because, man, he is, his heart is pumping for you, girl. And poor Suzanne, you know, she can't turn this down. 
All she's ever wanted was love. That's all she can think about. All she's ever wanted was to be cared for, loved, and treated right. So hearing this, she's like, oh my, you know, like a boy swooning over me. Oh my gosh. Like this is literally out of a fairy tale. Like my life's been shit, but finally I get to meet somebody that like literally is swooning over me. This is the craziest shit. So Suzanne grabs her bags and shit and she heads out the door with Jean and Bernadette to go meet this heartthrob that is literally swooning over her like her heart is beating she's like she can't stop smiling like what like what this boy oh i can't mm, it's gonna get him um like she's excited and i don't all this stuff i'm saying i'm just being dumb i'm not trying to be disrespectful to her at all because i know baby girl like i know how it is to want to be loved and she deserved that shit so i don't blame her for being happy. I would be too. I would have been acting just the same damn way. So when Suzanne got back to Jean and Burns house, there was no boy. There was no boy. You know, there wasn't. Them little bitches freaking lied, dude. Lied to this poor girl after all she's already been through. And then lied to her saying that there was a boy swooning for her over at their house just to get her back over there so they could do what's coming up next in this video. So when Jean and Byrne get Suzanne back to the house and she sees that there is no boy and that they did lie, these piece of shits. Um, Anthony and Glenn are waiting for Suzanne when she walks in the door. They immediately restrain her and pull her into the kitchen. She, at this point, is frightened. She is freaking out. She don't know what the hell is going on. Like, yeah, she knew this house was already a shit house, and these people were already just treating her shitty, but this was all new level. Like, what is happening right now? So once Glenn and Anthony restrain Suzanne and pull her into the kitchen. <sighs> Jean, Byrne, Anthony, and Glenn all start to strip Suzanne down and shave off every bit of her hair. Her hair on her head, her eyebrows, her pubic hair, everything because according to them the doctor told them that that is how they are going to get rid of the crads that Suzanne allegedly gave them however shaving off your head hair and eyebrows ain't part of that shit and not only that that's just you know that's just them being bullies they they, they already surely they didn't really think that Suzanne was the one that gave them crabs. I think they were just using it as an excuse to pick on Suzanne. Um, but this was humiliating. And then after shaving off all her head hair, eyebrows, and pubic hair, they made Suzanne clean it all up. Yeah, these piece, these mother... After Suzanne was done cleaning up all the hair from her own body, these freaking savage-ass idiots shaved off of her her head was then covered with a plastic bag and she was then beaten for hours now i don't know what happened um i assume that it was from the beatings and it was probably broke or something but suzanne's arm one of her arms i don't know which one ended up just starting to dangle like she couldn't lift it she couldn't move it she, no, there, she couldn't do anything with it and for the rest of this torture her arm would just hang there the rest of the time I mean she had to be in the worst amount of pain like I can't even dude Suzanne was beaten with belts belt buckles she was beaten with anything they could find around the house pretty much of course their hands and stuff 
and then you know I don't know if you've ever been into a kitchen that has those like long old big old wooden like forks and spoons hanging on the wall like kind of like a kitchen decor thing but they're like heavy and wooden and they're like long they're like probably as tall as you usually those shits to be her too like dude I just I can't think about it too hard because I literally will cry. You know how bad I wished I could have just been there to hold her and take her. Oh my gosh. I just, I wish I could have been, I could have done something so bad. So these mother truckers living in this house decided that they had to move Suzanne. They had to get her out of this house because her screaming and crying was disturbing the children yeah six children are still in this house while all this shit's going on i mean thank god y'all have sympathy for your six children get her out of the house before she makes a scene like i'm pretty sure that the children have been through hell too like these poor kids i really hope that whatever happened with these kids was good. I hope they're, they're loved and safe and nothing like this ever happened to them, which I really don't know, but I am I hope nothing bad ever happened to them. However, just being in this environment was already bad and torture, so can't really say that they aren't scarred and probably ain't having to go through a lot of problems because of this shitty ass household so remember how i said that burn lived like two doors down from jean well this is where they will take suzanne so they take her over to jean i mean burn's house and take her upstairs and pretty much just hold her hostage or whatever you want to call it in one of the bedrooms upstairs what is weird to me is like i said these houses are all together they're like the um duplex type things but there's like more almost like a two level apartment type thing you know what i mean so i don't understand how nobody heard these screams and called police or something unless because of what i told you earlier like the neighbors like were no 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 about this family maybe they were just so scared of them that they weren't going to call authorities because they were scared that they would get killed by these people or something so once they got suzanne to burn's house upstairs burn became like big bitch boss ringleader and this bitch had some obsession with chucky yes like little toy dude with the knife chucky freaking hate her dude hate them all but her ooh. so once they get Suzanne upstairs they gag her blindfold her and then she is forced to lay spread eagle and tied to a bed that is like upside down in wooden slats so she's just like straight up blindfolded gagged already in pain from being beat to hell and then she's tied up, probably tight as hell, on this hard ass wood. They used electrical cord to tie her to the bed. They put cigarettes out on her body, on her face. They did so much stuff to this girl. They around the clock tortured her and beat her. And you know what makes this even worse? They injected her with meth in order to keep her awake so that she could feel more of her torture and beatings. If that ain't so messed up, because you know, she for days, like I think it was like four days at this point, no food, no water for days, getting beat. They started seeing she was like, you know, passing out, like because she literally had nothing in her body to give her energy and she's been being beat so once they seen she started passing out from the torture and you know dehydration and starvation they were like no inject her with meth we want her to feel this torture that she absolutely did not deserve nobody deserves this but the freaking people that are doing it 
another thing that they would do to torture her, poor Suzanne, was I think mainly Burns' idea, but obviously they all let it happen. Um, they made her listen, I'm pretty sure with headphones, to full blast, full volume, all the way up as far as you could get it. I'm pretty sure it would be headphones because if it wasn't for one, they wouldn't want to listen to it all the time. You know what I mean? Yeah, it was headphones. Anyways, full blast, headphones on full blast, made her listen to one song on repeat over and over and over and over again never changing it, never turning the volume down, never stopping it. You know what that song was? It was called, Hi, I'm Chucky, Wanna Play? Yeah, this freaking Chucky bitch, dude. Go to YouTube and look up this damn song. I'll probably, actually, I'm gonna link it in the description below. And if you want to, you can listen to this song. But just imagine hearing it on repeat over and over and over again and then at one point in the song it says something like um like i thought you were my friend or something till the end or something like that and then somebody in the thing says this is the end like are you fucking kidding me everybody in that household was torturing poor suzanne and this is when clifford really stepped in and did some shit um he decided that he was going to take some pliers and pull out Suzanne's teeth. So first of all, he takes the pliers and he starts hitting her teeth and then pulling on them. He pulled two teeth out, I'm pretty sure one of her, or two of her front teeth, and then on the third tooth he was trying to pull out, you guys, you guys, it broke in half. So bare nerve was showing and oh my god dude i hate this story but i had to tell it bare nerve was showing from this tooth that was broken half and so this more excruciating pain poor suzanne had to go through and now even when she wasn't getting tortured she had this freaking horrible toothache her arm, I'm pretty sure, was just broken. I'm sure that was killing her. Her body was sore. This poor girl, starving and dehydrated too. Oh my god. So at the beginning of every single torture session Suzanne would go through, Bernadette would also say, Hi, I'm Chucky. Wanna play? Which would instantly trigger Suzanne into a screaming and freaking outfit because she knew that that was the damn play button to her torture for that day or that for them hours. Like, why? Like, she really did not deserve this. And I'm just, I just don't get why people are so horrible. You guys... It gets worse too. Suzanne, all like these few days she's been here so far, you know, not eating, not drinking, not being able to move. She wasn't allowed to use the bathroom. So of course this then started to piss the household off because man, it stinks in here. She stinks because poor Suzanne had nowhere to go. They wouldn't let her go to the bathroom. Where else was she supposed to go? Of course it stunk. But this pissed these bitches off and they decided that they needed to drag her into the bathroom and put her into the bathtub and wash her. But they didn't bathe her in soap and water and do it gently. No, they did not. They bathed her and disinfectant and they used really stiff brushes to scrub her body raw breaking the skin and you know when you break your skin you get disinfectant and stuff in the cut or something it burns they are just scrubbing her skin raw and this disinfectant it has to just be burning her all over this poor baby. Oh my God, this poor baby girl. 
so I'm going to introduce you to uh, another guy named David Hill. He's 18 years old. He comes over while Anthony and Jeff are watching over Suzanne and everybody else has gone doing something. Probably taking the kids to the park. Freaking, I don't know, these pieces of shit. You know, he comes in, he's hanging out with Anthony and Jeff. Well, he hears noises upstairs, which was Suzanne. And he was like, what the frick is that? Like, what's the, like what is that noise up there? And instead of Anthony and Jeff being like, um, it's nothing, like, come outside. You want to go smoke a cigarette? Let's drink. Let's go outside. Like, just ignore that. They were like, oh, we've got a woman captive. Suzanne, you might know her. You want to see? Yeah, these pieces of shit. So they take David upstairs to see Suzanne and oh my God, duh. He is in shock. He could not believe what the shit he's seen. Well, Anthony and Jeff decided to ask David, hey, you know, we're going to go out for a little bit. Do you mind watching over her? And left him there to watch over Suzanne now. Despite Suzanne being starving, dehydrated, beaten, and you know, this has been days. She hasn't ate in days. She has no strength. She happened to muster up the strength to beg David to please help her. Please, David, please help me. Like, will you please help me? Like, either escape or call police or just do something to help me. And David refused, guys. He said, no, I can't. And he just kept saying, no, I'm sorry, I can't. It didn't stop Suzanne from trying and trying. Please, please, please help me. But David kept replying with no, that he could not help her. That he's sorry, he just can't. Like later on though, David would say like to police when things come out that he was just scared of the group. He was super afraid that if he did anything to save her that they would like kill him or do something, whatever. Anyways, fuck him too. <laughs> fuck him. Um, anyways, so Michelle, Suzanne's sister, she starts to wonder where Suzanne's at. Like, finally, after a whole fucking week. Um, so she's going around. She knew that she'd been hanging out at Jean's house. So Michelle goes over to Jean and Burns' house, and she's like, hey, where's Suzanne at? Um, I know she was, like, last here. Well, um, Jean and Burns, like, no, haven't saw her. Sorry, don't know what to tell you. Bye. Well, Michelle was like, okay, well, if you haven't seen her, I'm going to report her missing and left. Well, that's when Gina and Byrne were like, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit, oh, shit. Like, this was the last place she was known to be. So we know that the cops are for sure going to be coming around here, which will probably lead them to Byrne's house that it, where Susan is. Suzanne is. I'm sorry. I keep oh, sorry for baby. Um. So they knew that at this point they had to get rid of Suzanne somehow. They were like, we can either let her go or we can kill her. And they said that if they let her go, they knew for a fact that they would be caught. She would go to the police and that they would all be thrown in prison. So they said that the only thing that they could do was kill this poor baby girl. So when it came time to get rid of poor Suzanne's body by killing her, Four of the people living in this shithole house were the ones to take her out. Um, it was for sure Bernadette, Jean, and I think it was Glenn and Anthony. I'm pretty sure it was those four. Anyways, they decided the worst possible thing they could probably decide to do to kill her, that they were going to burn her alive. Yeah, what the frick. So... They all get into a stolen car and put her in the trunk of it and drive her to this embankment thing. I guess this like hill thing and take her out and push her down it. And she's rolling and hitting, you know, rocks and trees and stumps and sticks while her body's already tore up, guys. Bad. And then once they, when she gets 
you know, to a stopping point, they all four go down there and burn a debt bitch ass, grabs a petrol type can thing and puts it on her and tries to light her on fire. Well, numerous times of trying to light poor Suzanne on fire, they, they were failed attempts. She wouldn't light on fire. But for some reason, Bernadette kept trying to do it. And finally, by the grace of her fucking Satan, Suzanne's poor precious body lit on fire. These four satanic evil mother truckers walked off singing burn baby burn while laughing yeah but you guys Suzanne was able to put this fire out and she was able to muster up the energy to climb back up this embankment and get out to the road where somebody that was driving by, I think it was like a little past six in the morning, spotted her and picked her up. They said her legs looked like raw meat. Her face was unrecognizable, uh, like there was, it was featureless. Her hands were burnt. I mean, oh, poor baby. These people picked her up and took her to the nearest house where they would call the ambulance. Suzanne drank six to nine glasses of water, but she could not even hold the glass. Her hands were so burnt and she was so weak. When she got to the hospital, her parents were contacted, but they literally couldn't even recognize her when they got there. Due to one of her thumbs not being burnt, they were able to get her thumbprint, though, and confirm that it was Suzanne. Through all of this pain, all of this stuff she went through, that couple that picked her up in that house she was at waiting on the ambulance, they said that the whole time she was there, she was nothing but polite. Thank you. Thank you. You guys are amazing. Just the sweetest person in the world still after being going through all this. So the hospital was able to fix um, Suzanne up enough to give her like enough energy and ability to talk to the police. And she told them everything. You go girl. She probably saved so many more lives. I really bet she did. And man, she is one tough cookie. This amazing woman. It was such a bad case that even the police who deal with these cases and these investigators that deal with these cases all the time were having to take breaks to go cry and break down. Sadly, Suzanne would literally go into a coma after telling the cops what happened. And I believe she was in the coma for around four days. I'm sorry, I don't know exactly how long. But she did finally pass away, sadly. All while um, Suzanne's in the hospital, this is just a few, like maybe a couple hours after this all happened, she got burnt and stuff. The idiots back at the house are all drinking and having a great time laughing and partying and stuff. The four that burnt her, still in their clothes from when they went and did that shit. But guess what? Police knocked at the door, they opened it, and they arrested them mother truckers right then and there because they had much evidence and they had um, Suzanne telling them everything. And it is said that while they were being arrested, Bernadette and Jean were laughing and joking still about all of it while being arrested. Of course, once they were arrested, all six of them denied having any involvement whatsoever, and every single one of them blamed and pointed the finger at one another, none of them taking the blame for shit. I mean, the hair and teeth and everything were still at the house, so I mean, there was just so much evidence. They had the tape of the Chucky song and all that. November 16th, 1993, the 22-day trial would take place for the six pieces of shit that did this to her. 
conspiracy to cause grievous bodily harm, murder, and false imprisonment would all be charged to Jean, Bernadette, Anthony, and Glenn. Because they were there when, you know, they were trying to murder Suzanne. So Jeff and Cliff got off the murder charge because they wasn't there when um, Suzanne was being burnt. But Clifford, Cliff, would be charged with the bodily harm and the false imprisonment because he did the bodily harm part. He admitted to pulling her teeth and stuff. And then Jeff, who was not really there that much, he was just charged with false imprisonment. Jean, Bernadette, and Glenn all got life in prison with a minimum of 25 years. Anthony got life with a minimum of 18 years, which was later dropped to a minimum of 16 years. Jeff got 12 years and Cliff got 15 years. So the detective would say, and I quote, psychological reports would say that these are all sane individuals. It is frightening that they are such ordinary people. There's nothing special about any of them. End quote. Bernadette got out in only 21 years for good behavior. So why the minimum of 25 years if she still got out in 21? Like, what the frick? And it was said she was having, like, sexual relations with one of, like, the bodyguards or police. So it's like, girl... Jean, Glenn, and Anthony, they're all still in prison, though, thank God. Cliff got out of prison after only eight years, and Jeff got out of prison after only five years. So what's the point of these minimums here that they didn't do? But man, can we all agree that Suzanne was a tough, tough girl, and she was just amazing and did not deserve this. I hope that whatever her afterlife is like, it is just the most perfect one for her. She did not deserve this. I hope these people that did this to her suffer a horrific rest of their life. And I hope hell really is real and burning hot for these sons of bitches. Sorry this case was pretty, pretty bad, but thank you guys so much for watching. I love you guys so much. Please like this video to help you grow out, and please subscribe if you want to hear more, and hit that bell if you want to be notified when I post more videos. If you guys are all about bringing missing people home, solving crimes, you know, cold cases and new cases, throwing these evil criminals in prison and getting things done, please subscribe because I want to build a community on my YouTube that gets stuff done and helps people. And all the people, all the victims, all the missing people, all the, you know, people that have been murdered, their family, all them people that get, you know, shut down or ignored or thrown on the back burner because of many reasons, maybe their sexuality or race is a lot of reasons why this happens. I want to be the voice for those people and to help them stories be heard as well. Yes, I'm going to share all the, you know, popular stuff too, but I want to make sure that the unpopular and unhurt gets heard. So if you want to be a part of that, please subscribe guys and let's do this. If you have a case that you want me to talk about or a personal case even you want me to share and get out there or, you know, you have something to ask me or something you want, you know, to talk about, whatever it is, please email me and I'll try to get back to you as soon as I possibly can. And guys, overall, be nice to people. You never know what they're going through. Be safe out there. Always watch your back and have your eyes peeled. And I love you guys so much. I'm so glad you're here and I hope to keep seeing you around. I hope you have a lovely day, guys. I will see you soon. Bye.